Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here, thank you for clicking onto the video. Hopefully you like what you see, and if you do, it would be awesome if you could subscribe and obviously give it a thumbs up. Uh, the more people who watch this, the more people I can help. So as the title says, this is a day in the life of a plant-based runner. Now, I've been plant-based for around six years, and it was a choice through a kind of combination of me wanting to improve my health, but also want to optimize my performance at the time I was playing football. And I felt like moving to this diet was gonna help me recover a bit faster, and it did. And I have been obsessed with this ever since. And um, yeah, I help people now who are interested in knowing more about the plant-based lifestyle or want to transition into that lifestyle as well. So what I'll do first thing in the morning is make sure I hydrate really important. I tend to go running first thing, so I make sure that I've got some water in me because after eight hours of sleeping, hopefully, uh, you'll find that you'll be sweating throughout the night and you tend to be dehydrated. That can affect performance. So first thing is I'll have around 600 mils. So this has just got some herbal tea in and I would have this with a pinch of salt and some lemon. And the salt is for the electrolytes, the lemon's just for taste. And straight after that, I have something called activated B12. So this is the bacteria that lives outside, but because of how clean everything is nowadays, and B12 tends to live on animals, and I'm not eating animals, so I need to make sure I'm having this, because it's gonna help support my brain health, immune system, and nervous system as well. So really important to have, and I tend to use an activated one because it makes it a bit easier to absorb. From here, I have some Omega 3s, so some fish, uh, sorry, some algae, and this is what fish eat to get the omega 3s. So instead of getting the fish to eat it, I just eat it myself. So I'll take two of these in the morning, and when it comes to the omega 3s, they're great for brain health, helps for anti inflammatory, and in particular, you want to make sure that you are eating more omega 3s than omega 6s because omega 6s are a high inflammatory food. Now after that, I will have something called a good green vitality, and it's just pretty much got every green thing ever invented. It's a probiotic, prebiotic, every healthy thing possible going in this, and um, it gives me a little bit of energy. And my rule of thumb is every meal I have, there needs to be something green with it. As you'll see with my breakfast, that's near impossible because it's porridge and I don't want to put any spinach or any peas in that because that just sounds disgusting. So I'll have this before a run and it tends to give me a little bit of energy as well. So I don't feel like that I need to have too much to eat. However, if I am doing a high intensity day or if it's a race, I will have something to eat, which tends to be something like a piece of bread or it might be a bagel and it tends to be not a fire risk food because I don't want to eat too much fiber and go for a run. Mistakes can happen, it hasn't happened yet, and I don't plan on that happening either. So um, yeah, just be careful on that. And once I get back from my run, I will have an electrolyte, and that's just to replace everything that I've just sweated out. And this is also loaded with B vitamins, so I'm always making sure I'm on top of that. So, I've got back from the run, done some stretches, and now it's time for something to eat. And what I've got here is just the pre kind of everything mushed together um, of what I'll show you in a second. And it's known as baked oats. Now I've got this from TikTok, it's taken over my life. And um, I absolutely love this recipe. I eat it every day and it's just, it ticks all the boxes for me. It's, I think there's around 50 grams of uh, protein in this. Uh, fantastic carbohydrates, good fats, very fibrous food as well. And it's got a bit of fruit in it as well. So. Um, I'll explain what this is here. So here's the dry mix of my baked oats. I'm just showing you kind of how much fills here and uh, very nutritionally dense place food. I'm just gonna give you the ingredients. I'll also put something up in the corner of the screen so you can pause it, write it down and give it a shot. Now this is very chocolate based because I am obsessed with chocolate. You can change it depending on what you like. So there's a cup of oats in here with a scoop of protein, a tablespoon of cacao powder, a teaspoon of baking powder, very important, don't neglect this. A teaspoon of cinnamon and a tablespoon of chia seeds, sunflower seeds and what else? Linseeds all mixed together. And then what I'll do is I'll put a, probably around a third a cup of almond milk in. And in particular, I use almond milk just because I can't drink milk because 
comes from a dairy. And I tend to use one that's fortified with other things, so I'm getting lots of calcium uh, and loads of other, other things in it. So it's really easy to make sure that you are getting everything that you need within the plant-based diet. Uh, this is around 50 grams of protein as well, so it's going to be very, very filling and very fibrous as well. So if you want to have food that fills you, go for fiber, go for protein, and make sure you drink lots of water, and that will help you keep fuller for longer. So once that's done, it'll turn into like a paste, and then I'll put it into a bowl, put some berries on top, and then I'll put it into the oven, so around 175 degrees for around 20 minutes, let it rise, and then put some peanut butter on top, and I'm good to go. So what I'll do is I'll do that now and then you can see the afterwards. You don't need to see me blend this. I'll put this in the oven. Pretty pointless and wasting your time. So let's just get into it. So that's how it would look before going into the oven. So I tend to use frozen berries, one because they're a lot cheaper and they tend to be healthier with regards to they tend to be fresher. So I'll use them in the oven 20 minutes and then you will see the afterwards. So here's a little tip when it comes to saving time in the kitchen. As you can see here, my baked oats is slowly beginning to rise. And what I've decided to do is to make my dinner now. So once my dinner is made, I can just come home later on, warm it up and I'm good to go. I've decided to have chili, one of my favorite meals. And this is how it is so far. I've not put other vegetables in. But what the recipe tends to look like, I just realized I forgot something here, is this is it. So, can of lentils, then it's onion powder, chipotle, ground coriander, small paprika, garlic, some tomatoes, Mexican beans, and I'll put frozen vegetables in so you can see seven servings of veg. So it's very veg based, which makes sense. And all I do is put all that in one pot, slowly warm it up, and then that's it, turn off, and then that's my chili done. So within 20 minutes, I've made my breakfast and my dinner. Um, you can make a big batch of this. I tend to make a huge batch, put it in the freezer. And when days when I just kind of bothered, I'll just come back, make that, and I'm good to go. So there's a little tip. So right here you have it. Here's the aftermath. Um, put some chocolate peanut butter on top. It looks kind of like dog turd. Uh, <laughs> presentation skills and still need to be worked on, but there's my baked oats done. I like mine to have a bit of goo in the middle. I don't like to be completely cooked through. So the peanut butter, peanut butter mixes really nicely with it. And here is the chili, all cooked through with the vegetables. So that's done. All I do now is just let that sit and let all the spices and herbs combine for a really nice flavor. Um, yeah, so two for the price of one within 20 minutes, done. Welcome back. So it's lunch time for me and what I've got today is some scrambled tofu. So it's around 100 grams of tofu if people are wondering. And what I do is I'll mix that with a bunch of herbs and spices. As you can see, I love to use herbs and spices just because it adds a lot of flavor to food without having to add salt. I try to use as minimal salt or fat when it comes to my lifestyle. I find that I do better when I don't have as much of those in my food. So what I have in my tofu scramble is onion powder, turmeric, smoked paprika, and garlic powder with a pinch of black pepper. Now the pinch of black pepper is to make the turmeric more absorbable when it comes to me eating it. So yet again, it's got an anti-inflammatory inflammatory process. I'll get my words out here. Um, and what I'll do, and you can probably see I'm just sauteing some spinach. So I'll saute that for all, a couple of minutes and wait, wait until that's with it down. I've got some sourdough toast, which is just getting cooked now. And after that, I will put the tofu in. I'll take about four or five minutes, less than that, to cook through. On my sourdough toast, I'll put some avocado and then have some tomatoes on top of that, maybe a little bit of tomato sauce and that will be my lunch. But what I'll do is I'll show you it afterwards. So yet again, a super fast meal, but lots of protein, good fats, vegetables, and a lot of greens. Everything that you need to make sure you're optimizing your health and well-being. Right, and here's the final result. So at the bottom is two slices of sourdough bread, which has just been toasted. I use sourdough because it's naturally fermented and it's easier on the gut. 
Uh, avocados on top of that, so some good fats. Then from here, there's half a bag of spinach, which has just been wilted down. You can see the tofu's changed color with the heat. And that's just been a couple of moment, a couple of minutes, and some tomatoes on top with a little bit of tomato sauce because I love tomato sauce. However, I will show you that I use the reduced salt just to be careful because if you are using sauces, they tend to be full of salt and sugar, so just be careful. And that will be lunch. So this has got around, I think it's like 30 grams of protein. So there's already about 50 grams of protein for lunch and breakfast combined, and then there's a little bit after in the afternoon. A mid-afternoon snack might be, um, usually it's a couple of plums with a handful of nuts, and that would be it. And then obviously you know what I'm gonna be having for dinner, which is the chili. So everything's, food now is being made. All I just need to do is to warm it up later on. And But I will show you what my dinner looks like, because I do add a couple more things. However, I've got to eat this quickly because I've got to go to work and I will see you soon. Everyone, so final meal of the day. Um, I've been thinking about this since I left to go to work and I'm so happy it's here. Um, so I'm just gonna show you it. So as you know, I made the chili at lunchtime and this is just kind of how I played it up. I'm not no chef when it comes to plating up food nicely. I played it up very basically, but I tend to think it looks all right. So I don't know if you can probably see here without me spilling it. Here's the chili, so chili on top with a lot of rice. I eat a lot of rice, by the way. Um, I love rice, rice loves me. And um, I've got some greens at the bottom as well. As I mentioned before, I always have greens with every meal. And I have a bit of avocado as well, and that's just to give it a little bit of fat. So that would be kind of what I eat in a full day. So my first meal would be the, depending on my training day, first meal would be kind of like a pre-workout snack, which would be a piece of toast or a bagel. And then I get back and I would have my baked oats. And then lunch would be the tofu with the toast, uh, scrambled tofu. And then a mid-afternoon snack would might be some fruit with some nuts. And then my last meal, usually one of my bigger meals, this bowl is actually quite a big bowl. And um, that would be my chili to finish off. If I'm still feeling hungry afterwards, I might have a little bit of chocolate, some dark chocolate, or I tend to have something called Kiwi Crush. Now this is a New Zealand thing, and um, it's used to help people go to the toilet, uh, but it's like an ice pop and it's just made from fruit. So I'll have that as a kind of like a sweet treat to trick the mind so I don't actually eat too much after that. And as I say, water-wise, I drink around four to five liters a day, and that's just to make sure that I'm staying hydrated, especially when I am running and exercising a lot. If I'm dehydrated, I will underperform. Um, and when I look at my nutrient breakdown, it comes to around 25% of my calories come from protein, around 55, I think it's 55 to 60% come from carbohydrates, and the remaining, which can tend from 15 to 20%, comes from uh, fats as well so I don't eat that much fat uh, and my body seems to do really well kind of when I'm at this level if I do increase my fat levels it tends to upset my digestion now everybody's different and I got my DNA tested when it comes to epigenetic profiling and I found that I am someone who does better when I'm eating more carbohydrates than I am eating more uh, car, uh, protein sorry and fats so carbs tend to be my best friend and i tend not to put weight on when i'm eating them i'm one of the lucky ones i guess um and yeah i tend to say consistent with this and when it comes to my days where i'll do a long run or i'll have a double training session i will eat more just to help aid with recovery um and occasionally i will eat treats i'm not perfect i don't try to be perfect i have ice cream like the vegan alternatives or the plant-based alternatives I have a cake, whatever I can get my hands on. If I'm feeling like it, I will have it. I don't deprive myself. The aim is though, I'll do that maybe once or twice a week and it's only usually on the longer running days. So that is my day of eating. I promise these videos will get better. Um, I'm starting to learn how this goes down and uh, thank you if you're still watching this uh, till the end. Uh, if you do like what you saw or you have any questions, one comment below click the like button and obviously subscribe. I want as many people to see this as possible because I want to try and help as many people. Um, 
and yeah just keep in touch i'll be on social media you can see if you look up my description i've got my social media channels there and i tend to post daily through that so if you want to see what i do on a day-to-day -day basis please feel free to follow me as well and apart from that look after yourself and i will be on within a couple of days talking about a training video until then take care